Explains History. Hello, my name is Mr. Q, and welcome back to another A Kid Explains History video. Here to help me today is my good friend, Dr. D. Hello. <laughs> we don't wear costumes. You really should. It makes everything look more realistic. Dr. D is here to help me talk about two good friends in history whose story did not end well. Spoiler alert! Their names were Julius Caesar and Marcus Brutus. They lived over 2,000 years ago in the Roman Republic. Tell them what a republic is, Dr. D. Basically means there is no king or queen. Power belongs to the people and their elected representatives. Let's start with Julius Caesar. He was born in 100 BCE and he was trained to be a soldier and a politician from an early age. As a general, he expanded Roman territory by invading places like Gaul and Britain. Our story begins when Caesar crossed the Rubicon River to take his army into Rome, which led to a civil war with his main rival, Pompey. The saying, cross the Rubicon, has come to mean passing the point of no return. Yeah, like if you say to your parents, I'm not doing my homework anymore, and you didn't turn anything in the next day, you just crossed the Rubicon. Now, on to Marcus Junius Brutus. It was said that one of his ancestors helped get rid of the last king of Rome. So maintaining the Republic was a big deal to him. When he heard that Caesar was fighting Pompey, he chose Pompey's side. It all came to a head in 48 BCE, at the Battle of Pharsalus. You know what happened? Pompey lost. Caesar was nice to Brutus, though. Mainly because Brutus' mom was one of his old girlfriends. In fact, some people think Brutus might have been Caesar's secret son. Either way, Caesar forgave him and even let him be a part of his government. He wasn't so nice to Pompey. Caesar chased him all the way to Egypt, where he was killed by the locals who were on Caesar's side. Brutus became Caesar's friend. He was given a lot of important titles, like Governor of Gaul. But he never liked some of the shady things he saw Caesar do. Like only gods could put their face on coins. But Caesar did it anyway. Yeah. He also put his friends in important government positions. Hmm? And had himself named dictator for life. Ooh. Okay, that's not good. In fairness, he also did some okay things, like reorganize the calendar to what we use today, and give land to the poor. He also allowed more people to become Roman citizens, which made him very popular among the regular people. By 44 BCE, senators thought Caesar was gaining too much power and needed to be stopped. They called themselves the Liberator, and the leader was Brutus's brother-in-law. They decided to kill Caesar on the Ides of March, which was a holiday marking the middle of the month. Caesar was warned not to go to the Senate that day by a fortune teller who told him to beware the Ides of March, and by his own wife who had a dream that something bad was going to happen. When Caesar went to the meeting, senators were hiding knives under their robes. They stabbed him 23 times. Apparently, he fought back until he saw Brutus among the attackers, and then he gave up, covering his face with his robe. Caesar probably didn't say, et tu, Brute? That means, you too, Brutus? But lots of people think he did, because that's a line in Shakespeare's play about it, which was written 1,500 years later. If Brutus thought killing Caesar would save the Republic, he was wrong. The people were angry, because they actually liked Caesar. And the Liberators had to run away, when Caesar's heir, Octavian, had them branded murderers. A series of civil wars happened, and Brutus killed himself after losing the Battle of Philippi at 42 BCE. Octavian became the first Roman emperor in 27 BCE, calling himself Augustus. What are you looking at? Oh my! <sighs> kind of a bummer of a story. Yeah, it's too bad these two didn't find a way to keep being friends. Well, I'm glad you were here to help me explain it. Man. Like, share, subscribe, and go onto our social medias for more Kicks History fun, and I'll see you later. Bye! Oh.